Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. I mean, planning is an act of faith, and you could say in one way. It, it just is. Like, you just, you don't know. The thing you want to always rest in is that having an intention, even if it's the wrong intention, is better than no intention at all. Hi, it's Joseph, and thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. For part three of this four-part series on why annual plans don't work, we look at the difference between a goal and a plan, and really why successfully executing a plan as it was planned isn't the most important thing. This may surprise you, but it's also been your experience, right? Plans rarely go as planned. So given that, how do you use planning effectively? I offer weekly member webcasts, online courses, and mentorship at clearandopen.com because it's my truth that with the right tools, anyone can eliminate the people, money, and time problems holding them back in business. And I share parts of these webcasts and courses on this show because I want to help you too. If you're enjoying the show and learning from it, I'd love your feedback. If you're listening to the show on an Apple device, all you have to do is open the podcast app view the full description of the episode, and click the link to leave a rating and review for the show. Thanks so much for listening. Let's start the show. This might be a silly question, but is there a difference between goal setting and planning? Yeah, I mean, it's not a silly, it's a great question. A goal, I mean, you can define it different ways, but I think of a goal as a result. So... If you want to lose 20 pounds. Great. That's yeah. Cool. That's a goal slash result slash dream, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, that's the result. A plan. The goal is the what. The plan is the how. Right? So you could have the goal of, of losing 20 pounds and then your plan could be, I'm going to um, take up mini golf to lose that weight. And then you find, surprisingly, after four weeks of playing, you know, 18 holes of mini golf a day that it's not really carving off the pounds. (laughs) Right. That game's good, but yeah. (laughs) Right. Hmm. This, this plan isn't working. The goal doesn't change. Right. But the plan does. And that's often what you'll find, right? You have a plan, the means to achieve the goal, but something happens. You're the mini golf course near you closes or it's not working, or you don't have time to do it, and you create a different plan. And what you'll find very often is your goals will often come true via plans you didn't expect or plan for. So annual goals are okay. Those are yes, good. Yes, that's what I was saying before. You plan a quarter at a time. Yes, because otherwise too much changes. Exactly. I like the breakdown, though. Yeah. More and I, remember, I remember you doing that with me two years ago. I used Asana and I had the, the major things I needed to get done in Asana. Yep. And I used to do annual planning in, in Asana. And uh, what I found is it's just too much. It's a mental bandwidth, like will thing. You to try to hold a, a whole year. It's too difficult. It's too difficult and just unnecessary. When it seemed like every quarter you'd have to redo the whole thing. Exactly. And then there's more time involved in looking at which do I, what do I need to get rid of and what do I need to change and what do I need to add yep. instead of going a quarter and going, okay, let's review my goals. Now let's come up with a plan to hit those this quarter. Exactly. And you might find that there's some things you need to plan annually and plan on like moving the office in nine months or something, you know, okay, there might be exceptions, something that actually requires a longer term plan, but then, okay, then you'll do that. But you, you, what you'll likely find is most of the stuff doesn't need to be planned until later on. It's quite liberating, just 12 weeks at a time. And then you can really focus on, you know, one week at a time because each week ends up being about 10% of what you had to work with. So fun. 
and you'll feel the hustle, but you'll feel like you're hustling to create a significantly sized result, you know, rather than like a one month goal or a one week goal. You know, there's only so much you can accomplish in a month, but in three months, you can do a lot. Yeah. It just feels better just talking about it that way. It's very, it's very slothy, sluggy. Mm-hmm. And you've already got quarters, you know, the quarters, the quarter system exists because you can do it on whatever schedule you want, but I use the quarters and that way every once in a while you get a little bit of a break, get some extra weeks. I had an extra week in December. Well, every quarter has 13 weeks. Does it actually work out that way? Yes. Cool. 13 times four is 52. Yeah, but there's not like somehow two extra weeks in one of the quarters. Well, right. here's, oh, well, if you talk about a particular day of the week. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, and, like, you know, the quarters start January 1, April 1, July 1, October 1. Um, but there's actually 13 weeks in each one of those. I don't know. So I, I can see, I can feel the fear of having the wrong plan being an obstacle right now. Okay, good. But I'm fighting through. Like I'm, I came up with my annual goals, mm-hmm. not a plan, but I'm going through them right now. And I am, I, there's just this thing going, you're going to come up with the wrong plan, even for three months. Uh huh. There's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> like, I just want to be like, yep, that's it. Yeah. I mean, just notice like, you know, there's the phrase, uh, you want to make God laugh, you tell it your plans. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the, I mean, planning is an act of faith and you could say in one way, it, it just is like, you just, you don't know the thing you want to always rest in is that having an intention, even if it's the wrong intention is better than no intention at all. You know, it's like in, in, med- in, the Buddhist path and, and the enlightenment path, the teachers will talk about like, well, you can meditate too willfully trying to control your experience. And that, that's, not, that's not productive meditation if you're trying to control your experience. And then you can also be like, okay, well, I'm not going to try to control my experience at all. I'm just not going to meditate at all. I'm just going to, if I can't make enlightenment happen, then uh, what's the point of meditating? Well, that doesn't work either. It's a similar thing here. So you can't control reality so that you can make your plans come true. I mean, can you, can you even make your day go the way you want it to? <laughs> right? Half of the days, maybe, right? Not if so, you have kids. Yeah, if you have kids, right. It's, look how hard it is just to get your day. Now, the goals you have for the day, you can get them done, right? But you say, all right, I'm going to do laundry at 11. I'm going to get the kids at three. We're going to eat at six. And I'm going to get these three, these three things done in the morning, right? Then what happens, right? So one of the kids ends up being sick. The laundry machine broke. You do the things over dinner at, at 7.30, right? It all happens, but not the way you thought at all. Yeah. So you, you have to have a plan, just like you have to have a budget so that you have something to manage to so that you know just how off the plan it's getting, right? This is the argument I always get in with people with budgeting because one of the reasons people resist budgeting, budgeting is a killer, right? It's part planning and part money. <laughs> it's very avoidable, right? So if the money part is, is, uh, doesn't get people, the planning does. I remember talking to someone, they were like, well, I just spend whatever I do and it all just sort of works out. I said, well, what if you just decided how much you were going to spend? Well, then I'd have to be looking at that all the time. My Not wife exactly. said how much she loved having the budget to look at before she went shopping. And if you go over, at least you know how exactly you've deviated from the plan, you see? That's it. That, that's see the content context thing there. It's not about holding rigid to the plan or you failed the plan. It's drawing the line and being able to see how far you've deviated from that plan, right? You know, like the whole the, the airplane cliche about how the airplane is off course 95% of the time, but they know how far off course they are, right? 
if air traffic control says, hey, there's a storm, you got to go around it, they know how far off course they are, right? And then they can tell all the passengers, we're going to be seven and a half minutes late because there was a plan. They don't go, oh man, the plan, it was a complete waste of time. Let's just never plan a trip again. Let's, we just fly and we'll get there eventually. That way nobody's disappointed. <laughs> right? There's a plan. And it doesn't go as planned, but it's so hard for our minds to get that. Yep. And that's I mean, I've, I've done a personal, I've done a personal budget. And the great thing about that was I found money that I didn't mm-hmm. even know I had. But trying to put it into my business, it's because there's always something. Mm-hmm. There's big ticket, big, big things going out. And I have a lot of equipment and so it's really tough. Yeah. If instead relate to plans as if it comes, if it happens the way it, it's, you planned it, it's a miracle. Mm-hmm. That's how to, now um, Peter will laugh at me being the, the handy guy that he is. I, I am not a mechanical person. I've, I've owned three different houses and I've worked very hard to become even a little bit handy. So when I go to like fix something or fiddle with something, if it goes as planned, it's a miracle, Right. And every time I imagine, I was the fantasy in my head is like, okay, I'm going to get my drill and I'm going to get this tool and that tool. And in 20 minutes, I'm going to have the thing fixed, right? And what happens is I end up spending 20 minutes just trying to find the screw I dropped in the grass, you know, like, (laughs) or like, you know, wrestling with an extension ladder that's not behaving or like, it just, it's always takes five times longer than I thought, right? But every once in a while, it goes exactly like I imagined. And I'm like, oh my God, it actually happened the way I imagined. Amazing. There was no, you know, rusty screw I had to drill out. There was no, you know, thing I couldn't get apart. There were no extra parts at the end that I had to figure out what to do with. You know, anything with cars is always like that, right? Oh, let's we'll change my oil. That just only takes 20 minutes. No problem. Oh, I can't reach the oil filter without bending my elbow the wrong way, you know? I swore off cars 25 years ago. (laughs) For exactly that reason, right? And and then when you see a mechanic, right, dealing with a car, like you see they have this different attitude. I I, I used to have this this kind of kid work on my old Honda Civic in in Kia and I would hang around and watch him. And I could see like the points where I would get all frustrated that it didn't go as planned. He's just like, I guess we'll have to find another way. Oh, I can't get your, uh, I can't get the ball joint apart. Here, let me get this piece of uh, pipe, you know, to extend the wrench. And here, you stand on it. I actually did that. I stood on the end of this wrench and put like two hundred pounds of torque on this thing to find. It. And and like here, I am thinking, oh my god, we can't get this joint apart. It's the end of the world. We're never going to be able to do it. And he's like, oh, we'll just try something else. We'll just try something else. We'll just try something else. And that's what that looks like. And all of you do this in one realm of your life, you know, or probably many, where you have the expertise and the experience. You already know it never goes as planned, but you have this patient, fortitude filled, we'll just find another way. We'll just find another way. We'll just find another way. You, you all do this somewhere. Mm-hmm. In some other domain, you kick and scream and whine when it doesn't go as planned. So I'm just saying, Make it all the patient fortitude part and get that none of your plans go as planned. And that's a kind of surrender, insert, talk about thrival, the flow. If you use my five stages of engagement, thrival is the realm where you learn to, you learn the limits of your personal will. You learn how to make your plans happen as much as you possibly can. And then you run into the limit and you see where your personal will runs into the will of life itself and that there's just certain things you just can't make happen. And then you learn to kind of surf with it and then you're in flow land and it'll be a lot easier if you don't, if you only do 12 weeks at a time. Because chaos is just how it is here. Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage the Clear and Open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. Until then, know that Clear and Open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do.
If you want to help the show grow, I'd appreciate you leaving a rating and review on iTunes. All you have to do is open the Apple Podcast app, view the full description of the episode, and click the link to leave a rating and review. Or you can go to clearandopen.com slash review, and it will bring you to the right place. If you're looking for more support on your journey, head over to clearandopen.com for even more tools, articles, and free resources. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now.